let's say I have a database like a MySQL database, like an Oracle database, like a DB2 Postgres database, and um, I need to read the data out of such a database in an efficient way without having a lot of effort um, to create a connection to that. And uh, let's say I would like to have a REST API, and that REST API should support pagination. And for that, I have a dummy sample database reports, uh, which is uh, filled in with data from the XP API management solution, that uh, matrix database. And inside that reports database, I have a number of uh, tables. Oh, uh, describe tables. No, show tables was correct. Show tables. OK. And here I have. Um, table called matrix data and if I describe that table and I see it has a few columns and then I can say how much columns or how much entries do I have in that table and you see there is a considerable amount of data where pagination makes sense and to read that data in an efficient way and to create a REST API out of that you can go and say um, you would like to use API Builder and to get started um, you have to install the API Builder command line interface with that um, NPM command. So that means you have uh, Node.js um, installed. Then you can use API Builder CLI to create a new project. And then you follow the steps uh, which are uh, shown on the screen. And I do that here, not on my Windows machine, just because I have no access out of my Windows machine into that virtual machine to the database, just because how the database is configured. Okay, um, so that means I go and say API Builder, a new project to initialize, and that is a read database. And this is then the next step I have to do. Now, this is NPM, and NPM means I have to, oh, sorry, yeah, first, first I have to go into that. Um, NPM is working on dependent packages, and now I have to install, I have to download all dependencies into my API Builder project. That takes a moment. OK, um, after this is done, I get some kind of an empty API Builder project. And um, I would like to make that available outside of my virtual machine. I would like to use my Windows machine. And I can go into that default JS and just allow me to access the command or the admin console admin console outside of that virtual machine before it was limited to be reachable from the local host only this is just for the development uh, reason so now i can say npm start oh no sorry first i have to do one more thing because i have a process running on 8080 and i would like to use a different port. Here's a hidden file, which is also used for development reasons, um, because ultimately the API builder process is supposed to be to run in a Docker container, and that Docker container gets the information injected by environment variables. And um, during development, I could go and set environment variables like so, and say, this is the value. Or I can go into that very uh, handy environment file and set the environments I would like to have. This is not then ultimately checked in into version control. It is, um, um, yeah, it stays local on your system. So let's say there is a variant variable. This is uh, the MySQL host, and it must be localhost so that I can connect. MySQL has limited my access um, from localhost only. That's why the API data process is running here internally. Then I know already um, I need a user, of course. You will see it later. And I know already I need a password. So these three environment variables I um, I will you will see in a second when the MySQL connector is installed. And I'm configuring the port to be on on the different ones so that my API builder can start. So now when this is done, you get that console. And but I know I can now access that console from outside of that virtual machine. I can go and say, this is my virtual machine running, and this is now the process on this port, and there should be a console. And now I have my user interface. And um, as I would like to talk to a database, um, 
I would like to go for Oracle, I can go for Postgres, I can go for MySQL and install the MySQL. And now in the background, an additional NPM package is installed, which takes also a second. So now dependencies are uh, installed, etc. pp. And now the process is saying me, please edit the MySQL default, MySQL default file. And you see, this is where you have to configure your connection. I could also go and uh, replace that string here, which I normally I would do by using an environment variable as well, because this, when later running this API builder project as a Docker container, the Docker container gets injected, the MySQL user, the MySQL password, and so on. And of course, the MySQL host as well. So that means um, it makes sense to say, I would like to have it like so, and say this should be the host. And the database, in my case, you can also externalize that into an environment variable as well, it should be reports. The user has been configured in our configuration file, password as well, it should work. Now the API Builder project has restarted and if everything goes fine, we have already discovered all of the database tables. So that means I made obviously everything correct. And now we have what API Builder is calling a model. And I can now go into that um, model and I see how that database columns are, let's say, reflected into that model. And now I can go and create out of that model, I can create, sorry, um, I can create an endpoint for the database, uh, for yeah, for the database table, generate endpoints. And this creates me some kind of a CRUD API. You can also limit that CRUD API and say that you don't want to allow someone to send a delete request and then you can go and delete it from here. Um, but let's say I would like now to query the database and say, first of all, give me, give me the count and execute that. And then it returns how many entries we have in a database. That takes a second. I don't know how exactly that takes a moment, but this is now the database returning that data. Okay. And now let's say when you would like to do pagination, you can use query, you can use, um, yeah, this is find all that would give you everything not very useful that for that amount of data. I think query might be a good option to say, give me the data you have in your, in your database table. And here you have out of the box um, pagination support and say, you would like to limit the result set to three. And this is how pagination works all the time, that you have a limit parameter and that you have a skip parameter. And let's say I would like to start from the beginning. Give me the first three results and then maybe some order criteria might be important to give useful information to the user. I can execute that. And now I'm getting three results paginated and that can be shown. And then the client, is, uh, the client using that pagination API is now saying to me, give me the next three. And then um, it's hard to see because the data is very synthetic, um, but the data is then changing to the next three. Um, maybe we can check for the date. Yeah, it's very hard to see a difference, but this now are the next three results, etc. pp. So um, that's basically, and let's say now I would like to get 50 and skip the first three. Um, so that means these two parameters are working in combination to enable um, pagination. You can also um, do more sophisticated stuff um, and say um, you would like to, to um, get the data as part of uh, another REST API. Um, you, can, you can use a flow combination because um, that data you have now available as a model, you can easily make part of your, your flow. You see, we already do that for the query parameter, um, but um, with that you can implement, take the, implement any API and take the data from that query database, including pagination support automatically. Okay, that's how it works for um, Oracle databases. Um, and I think also for others, you might have to install additional drivers, um, um, you cannot directly then communicate, I mean, the normal Oracle driver.